When a heartbreaking betrayal causes him to make a drastic life-altering decision, an awkward roboticist does whatever he needs to in order to save the most important person in his life. Soichiro Takakura's mother died giving birth to him in 1968, and his father passed away 17 years later. Soichiro then finds an abandoned kitten named Pete and takes him home. He is then adopted by Koichi Matsuhito, his father's good friend and colleague, who has a daughter named Riko. Soichiro studied electronics at college, while Koichi taught him mechanical engineering in his home lab. However, his adoptive parents perished in a plane crash, and Riko is sent to live with her uncle, Kazuto Matsuhito, while Soichiro remains in their parents' home. On March 1, 1995, Soichiro works in his lab when he sees a TV show panel discussing his creation, A1, the newest household robot, and is horrified to discover that his picture's been televised. His business partner at FWE and Riko's uncle, Kazuto calls him, and an embarrassed Soichiro asks why the former gave the TV show his picture. Kazuto argues that his handsomeness is good for PR. Soichiro then sees that Pete wants to be let out after seeing the snow through the window, so he ends the call and opens all the doors because he knows Pete believes that one of the doors opens into summer. As Soichiro is about to open the front door, Rico arrives and picks Pete up. The pair then make their way inside while Pete wistfully looks at the door, determined to find the door to summer. After working, Soichiro goes over to Riko, grabs her other earphones, and realizes she's been repeatedly listening to the same song. Soichiro then notices that she's reading a book about the foundations of robotics and comments it's not for girls to read, but she disagrees. Soichiro remembers that Riko is about to move to a different school on March 9 and asks her to visit him during her summer vacation. Visibly despondent, Riko looks over at his drafts and realizes he's working on the final blueprints of the plasma battery. Koichi's last project before he died. Soichiro explains that he's on the brink of completing it, claiming that machines won't need recharging anymore, so the future where man and robots coexist is near. When Riko goes quiet, her adoptive brother quickly notices. However, she tries to brush it off when the doorbell rings. They're surprised that Soichiro's girlfriend and Kazuto's secretary, Rin Shiraishi, has stopped by to show him some documents. Pete hisses at her, but Rin shrugs it off and offers to make them food. Riko slams a cooking pot onto the table and quickly leaves citing she still has to finish packing, much to Soichiro's confusion. In the kitchen, Soichiro reviews the document that'll transfer some of his stocks to Rin. However, she declines, and they argue about Riko, as Rin is envious that her boyfriend loves his adoptive sister more than her. Rin asks why he's giving her half his shares, so Soichiro explains that she deserves to be included, given her competency at her job. However, Rin declines, citing she only wants Soichiro to focus on his work and admits to being jealous of Riko. Soichiro then decides to sign the documents to dissipate her doubts, and she kisses him in gratitude. On March 8, Soichiro is called into the office by Kazuto and is surprised when Rin joins them. Kazuto announces they're holding a shareholders meeting and explains they must start robot production immediately. However, Soichiro asserts his second model isn't ready yet and believes a third model is necessary before mass production can even be considered. Kazuto elaborates that he won't approve of further development costs and that they have to sell the rights to gain more capital, citing that Manix Enterprises, a rival company, is willing to buy it from them. They decide to vote on the decision, and unfortunately, Rin and Kazuto outvote him. As Soichiro tries to comprehend what happened, Kazuto also informs him that part of the proposal is that Soichiro will remain a shareholder but must terminate his connections to the company and bans him from using the facilities. Horrified at their betrayal, Soichiro flees. He quickly drives back to his house, where he almost crashes into an FWE van leaving the premises. Soichiro then rushes inside and discovers that his equipment and research are gone. Later, Riko stops by and finds a drunk Soichiro cleaning up the lab. He accidentally cuts himself on the broken picture frame of their family photo, and she rushes over to help him. While cleaning his wound, Riko asks if Kazuto destroyed his lab, but Soichiro lies that he trashed the place. Riko knows he's lying since he'd never throw away Koichi's work. Soichiro then laments that he always loses everything he cares for, so Riko rushes to hug him, promises she'll never leave, and proclaims her love. However, Soichiro says she can't help him since she's just a kid, so Riko slaps him, hurt by his words. She then realizes that he's given up, so she tearfully leaves. Soichiro finds that she's left her Walkman and takes it. He sees a flyer for a cold sleep insurance service, claiming it can help him dream his troubles away. Soon, a depressed Soichiro visits the cold sleep company, Gredius. The agent confirms that he and Pete will be kept inside the pod for 30 years, and Soichiro wishes to be put in cold sleep immediately. However, he first needs medical clearance. 
After running tests on him, the doctor turns Soichiro down for the procedure since he's still intoxicated. He knows Soichiro is desperate to escape and tells him he shouldn't let alcohol cloud his judgment. The doctor then instructs him to sober up and give his decision more serious thought, at least for someone he cares about. The doctor informs the agent that Soichiro will be re-evaluated tomorrow. Meanwhile, a heartbroken Rico is by the beach. Remembering that when they were younger, Soichiro found her in the same spot and stayed with her until she stopped crying. Elsewhere, Soichiro reviews a document that'll pass his company shares to Rico when she turns 20. Soichiro then reminisces about his time with Rico and tells Pete he's not running away. Rico returns home and overhears Kazuto and Rin planning their next move, which is to outsource engineers from other companies to complete Soichiro's plasma battery. Horrified, Rico tries to call Soichiro, but her uncle sees her. She lies about meeting up with a friend and quickly leaves. Suspicious, Kazuto redials the last number on the phone and discovers she tried to call Soichiro. He rushes to inform Rin, but the latter reveals that Soichiro called her and is on his way there. The secretary then tells Kazuto to go after Rico while she deals with Soichiro. Later, Soichiro arrives and becomes suspicious that his ex-girlfriend seems too familiar with Kazuto's house. He threatens to reveal everything to the public if they don't renounce the shareholders' meeting and return all his research. Suddenly, Rin distracts the roboticist and injects him with a paralytic substance. While Soichiro lies motionless on the floor, Rin opens his bag, and Pete jumps out and attacks her. Furious, she chases after the cat, but it escapes through an open window. Rin then sees someone drive Soichiro's truck away. She asks her ex-boyfriend who his accomplice is, but he passes out. She then spots his cold sleep contract and hatches a plan. Meanwhile, Rico reaches Soichiro's house, but she is intercepted by the person who took Soichiro's vehicle. Later, Soichiro finds himself inside a cryogenic pod with Rin standing beside it. She explains that she had him committed to a facility handled by Mannix. She used to work in the company, and because she is aware of their tax fraud, they owed her a favor. Rin then bids him goodbye as he goes under and dreams of Rico. Soichiro wakes up 30 years later, on February 25, 2025. As the doctor examines him, he realizes that Soichiro bought his policy from Mannix Insurance, not Credius. Soichiro asks where Pete is when an android nurse named Pete arrives. Dismayed that his cat isn't with him, he falls off his chair, and Pete catches him. In the recovery room, Pete explains that Soichiro must remain in the hospital for observation. He insists on leaving, but the android objects. A lawyer then visits him, explaining that since Mannix went bankrupt years ago, Soichiro lost all his assets but assures him he'll be financially compensated enough to get back on his feet. The lawyer then hands him a piece of paper with Rico's current address and adds that she kept inquiring about the roboticist's status for years. The following day, Pete discovers that Soichiro has fled. Soichiro leaves the building to hail a cab when Pete joins him and uses an online app to book a taxi. After the android shoves him inside the vehicle, Soichiro is in awe of the driverless taxi. Pete explains that he's defective and has decided to stick with Soichiro since he's worked with robots. After tossing Soichiro's wallet out the window and handing him a smartphone, the android informs him that cash, coins, and gold are worthless in today's society because everything is digitized. The pair locate Rico's address, only to find a messy apartment where an overweight, middle-aged Rin is waiting for Soichiro. The woman used Rico's name because she knew he'd never look for her if she used her real name. She explains that one year after he went into hibernation, Kazuto died from an illness, the company was taken over, and she was imprisoned for evading taxes for Mannix. Rin then accuses him of having her locked up and says someone stole her shares. She informs him that Rico went to his house that night, but there was an explosion, and her body was never found. Later, the pair visit Rico's grave, where Soichiro mourns for his adoptive sister. They then go to the beach where Rico used to sit while listening to music. As he uses her Walkman, Soichiro tells Pete he's listening to her favorite song. He wishes he'd apologize to her, but now he wants to figure out who stole his shares and what caused her death. Soichiro remembers Rico stating that Pete would be happy if there were only summers. However, if that were the case, Pete would just look for a door to winter instead. She said the cat takes after Soichiro's determination that way. He then declares that he'll look for the door to summer and ask Pete to help him. The android accepts since he's tasked to care for the roboticist for five days anyway. At the library, Soichiro discovers that his former company, FWE, was purchased by Guardian Manufacturing. Pete informs him that he must go to sleep mode for three hours to recharge since Android's self-regenerative energy lasts semi-permanently. Intrigued, Soichiro examines Pete's plasma battery in the restroom. Pete then explains that the humanoid robot market is dominated by FWE, Guardian, and Aladdin Industry, and reveals he's an Aladdin product. They make their way to the lobby of the FWENG building, the new company created when FWE and Guardian merged. Soichiro requests information 
information on any former shareholder, adding that he made the A1, but the receptionist refuses him access. However, she glitches for a brief moment, then escorts him to the president's office. Meanwhile, P tries to ask the other receptionist out on a date, but she doesn't understand the command and declines his invitation. They arrive at the office, where the president, Gota Suboy, enthusiastically runs up to Soichiro. Gota asks if he recognizes him, but unfortunately, he doesn't, much to the former's dismay. Afterward, Gota assures Soichiro that he'll find any information about the shareholders. The president then gushes about Soichiro and asks why he gave his rights to Aladdin, which shocks the latter. Gota then explains that Soichiro met him when he visited his family restaurant to look for Professor Toy, who was arrested for embezzling research funds, and that he signed his book. Later, Soichiro watches a new segment of Professor Toy being confronted by a reporter. Professor Toy explains the mechanics of his time transfer machine and insists that it works. P tells him it would have been difficult to forget a kooky personality such as Professor Toy. Still, Soichiro explains that it's impossible that he'd done the things Gota mentioned because he hadn't completed the plasma battery, and he's never heard of Aladdin. He surmises that someone's been using his identity. After receiving a call from Gota, they return to the office, where the president hands Soichiro the list of shareholders. Soichiro learns that his stocks were transferred to Aladdin's founder, Taro Sato, and Gota explains that he was one of their major shareholders. They discover that Soichiro created Pete's first model and that Taro Sato was his patent attorney. Upon further research, they learn that Pete's second model was designed by Rico Sato. The following day, the pair head to Professor Toy's lab. The older man hugs Soichiro and hurries him inside. The professor shares that he'd been waiting 30 years for this moment, explaining that Soichiro's presence proves that his time transfer machine works. Soichiro realizes that he himself has been the mastermind all along. Soichiro, from another timeline, told Professor Toy to build the machine so that he could go back in time and rewrite their future. The professor instructs Pete to strap gold bars onto Soichiro and tells the roboticist to sell it when he returns to the past to fund his time transfer machine research. Professor Toy then tells Soichiro to complete the plasma battery design since it will power the machine. Later, Pete tells him the mission is too risky and asks him not to go through with it, but Soichiro is adamant. Professor Toy then advises Soichiro to return to this day, so the roboticist plans to undergo cryogenesis after his mission to do so. Pete realizes he's relieved of his duties, so Soichiro frees him and asks the android to keep the Walkman safe. Soichiro then stands on the platform and prepares to be sent back when the worried Pete jumps in the machine with him. Soon, the pair returns to February 28, 1995, and they're almost hit by a car. The driver then checks on them, and Pete seems to recognize who he is. The next morning, Soichiro wakes to find Taro Sato beside him. The lawyer explains that he had already cashed the gold he brought back, placed all his research materials upstairs, and charged Soichiro for his service. Grateful, Soichiro hugs Taro, who reveals that Pete explained everything to him. Although he still isn't convinced that they're from the future, his wheelchair-bound wife, Midori, is thrilled about their arrival. That night, Soichiro apologizes to Pete for putting him at risk, but the android says he still has one more day to serve him, so he doesn't mind. Soichiro worries about the android's return to the future, but Pete explains that he'll just set his sleep mode to 30 years. Soichiro says he's almost done with his blueprints and is ready to save Rico. On March 1, it starts snowing, and Soichiro begins finalizing his plan. Soichiro enters Gota's family restaurant to find Professor Toy. Sitting across from the depressed older man, the roboticist explains that he returned from the future using the time transfer machine, then gives the professor the funding for his research. However, Professor Toy refuses, just as a younger Gota points out Soichiro's picture on TV. As an inventor himself, Soichiro sympathizes with the professor and assures him that his machine will succeed. The professor then hands him some money for their meal and leaves. Seconds later, Gota asks Soichiro to sign his book, so he does and tells the boy he'll be a great inventor one day. Later, as Soichiro finishes his drafts, Taro appears, and the two men talk about Midori's accident that led to her paralysis. Soichiro also shares that he named Pete after his own cat. Soichiro asks Taro to expose Rin Shiraishi and Manix's tax evasion. He also instructs him to set up a new company for his patent applications and that Taro's compensation will be shares of FWE stock and the presidency of the said company. Soichiro asks the lawyer what he'd like to name his company, and after spotting a poster on the wall, he settles on Aladdin. As a final favor, Soichiro asks Taro to take Rico in, which his wife gladly accepts since she's always wanted a family. On March 8, Pete assures Soichiro that he'll be able to get his equipment from his house in time. The android then runs towards the house when he sees past Soichiro drive by. When the van that carries all of Soichiro's confiscated research drives toward him, Pete intercepts the vehicle. The terrified workers flee the scene, allowing the android to steal the van. Elsewhere, Soichiro finally finishes his blueprint.
prince. He then goes to Kazuto's house, where he sees Rin incapacitate his past self. Soichiro then breaks the window for Pete to escape, places the cat in the truck, and drives away. Soichiro returns home and reunites with Rico just as Pete arrives with a van. Then, Soichiro crashes the truck into the house and sees the gas tank leaking. He then burns the documents transferring his assets to Rico and rigs his house to explode. They then drive away, and Soichiro explains everything to his adoptive sister. At Taro's house, the couple welcomes them, and Rico understands that she'll have to change her name to Rico Sato as the couple's adopted daughter. Soichiro then hands Taro his stock certificates and says that when he sells FWE to Guardian, he must give them the equipment inside the van. Soichiro then hugs Rico one last time and apologizes for having to leave her again. However, Rico is despondent, so he explains that she's still young and has yet to experience life. Rico jokes that he doesn't have to reject her twice in one day, so Soichiro admits he fears regretting his decision in the future. When Pete sees how lonely Rico looks, he says he'll wait for Soichiro with her. Pete realizes that it's no coincidence he returned to the past, as his decisions will also be part of the future, so he bids Soichiro farewell. The following day, Soichiro returns to Credius to hibernate for the second time. Thirty years later, Soichiro wakes to find Pete holding his cat, welcoming him back. He then reads a letter from Taro, who recounts that Rico also became an inventor, participating in the development of Pete and the plasma battery. He adds that 20 years ago, Rico went into hibernation at Credius and tells Soichiro to find her. Shocked, Soichiro rushes to her cryogenic pod just as her sleep ends. Hours later, Rico, who's now the same age as the roboticist, wakes to Soichiro holding her hand, and they stare at each other lovingly. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.